Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve remove element leak code number 27. So we're given an integer array called nums and another integer called val. And we need to remove all the occurrences of val in nums in place. So that means remove it in the object itself, not return a new array. Now completely ignore this stuff. Just read the example here. It's a lot easier. So if nums is 3223 three, and we're trying to remove val is equal to three. So if you were just to remove them, it would be nothing, two, two, and nothing. And so you don't want to just do that. You need to remove them from the array and place all the relevant stuff at the beginning. And we also want our function to return the number of elements we keep. So there's two things that we kept in the array. And so we should return that number, which they're calling K. Okay, let's look at this example here. So 0, 1, 2, 2, 3, 0, 4, 2. We try to remove all the twos. So we're going to return five because there's five elements to keep. And they mark something really important, which is that the order of these don't matter at all. They don't have to match the same order as the original array. If it did, it would be 0, 1, 3, 0, 4, but they actually have 0, 1, 4, 0, 3. And so any permutation or rearrangement of these numbers here is totally okay. As long as you keep the numbers you want to keep and you return how many you kept, that is totally fine. We need to do it in the space of the original array. And at the end, you can basically leave whatever you want there. So it does not matter what you leave beyond the returned K. Hence, they are underscores. It doesn't matter. Okay, so say we're given this array and we're trying to remove all of the twos. Okay, so what we're going to do is place an index i at the zero index and we're actually going to think about this index as n minus one. So if n is equal to seven, there's seven elements in the array. Now we're starting at the front here. Do we want to keep this number? No, we want to remove this number because it's a two. But what we do is not just remove it because we want something else to be here. What we set it to be is what's at n minus one. So we would set this to be a four. And when we get rid of a two, what we're going to do is move over our index n minus one. And really all that means here is just decrementing n. And we are definitely not going to move over i in this scenario because what might have happened here is that this actually might have been a two. If that was a two, then that would have placed this as a two and we would have moved past it. Luckily that didn't happen, but we need to watch out for that. Okay, now on this iteration, we'd see we're good to keep this number. So we're going to move past it. We can move past that and move past this and we're on to a two over here. We are going to remove it and we are going to place with it what's over here, but it is a two and we're still going to move over n minus one here. So that just means we're going to decrement n. But then on this iteration, we're going to see again, hey, this is still a problem. We have a two here. And so we're going to place with it what's at n minus one. Well, it is now a three because that one shifted over and we're going to shift over n minus one. And so that moved n down to four. And notice here, we are completely done. And we even know the value of k. k is equal to four here. And so even though there's a three and a two and a four over here, this is just garbage to us. We don't care about this stuff here. What happened is when i and n minus one hit the same element here, that means that we've removed all of the garbage. And it even tells us how much stuff we have left. We have four things left to keep. So we would just return whatever n is at the end here. So this is going to have a time complexity of big O of n because we're basically just moving i forwards through the array and n backwards. And the space complexity is completely constant because we're just using two indices. Okay, so we're going to get i is equal to zero. And we initially get n is equal to the length of nums, except we're actually going to be decreasing n as we go through here. So then while i is less than n, if nums at i is equal to val, so if we're on something we want to remove, then all we do is set nums at i equal to what's at nums at n n minus one. And we do not increment i in this scenario because we might have placed a val here. And so all you do is n minus equals one. Okay, then otherwise, that means that this was something we want to keep. If we want to keep it, then just move on i plus equals one. That's all we do. At the end of this, almost miraculously, you can return n and that's going to be the amount of stuff that we kept. Because think about it, we start with n things. And then basically, whenever nums at i is equal to the val, you're going to decrement n and that both shifts it over and actually decreases the number of things that you had. And so at the end, you're going to have this many things. Okay, this is going to have a time complexity of big O of n, and it's going to have a space complexity of O of one or constant. If you run this, this is going to pass the cases and submit that's going to pass all of our test cases very quickly. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Check out algomap.io in the description if you haven't already and have a great day, guys. Bye bye.